Hello everyone and welcome to episode 9 of Stratwatch. So here we go again, we're going to do another uh, Stratwatch for you. We are going to bring you up to date with all of the latest developments. Stratosphere wise, we're going to have a look at forecast data and then we're going to have a look at a historic cold winter from a stratospheric perspective. This week we've got 85, 86 coming up, which has a very, very cold February. We'll have a look and see whether that was stratospheric related. So sit back, relax, enjoy. I should talk you through Stratwatch in a but just to say there was a 6 m broadcast again uh, today and there is going to be a 10 to 14 there coming up for you. <coughs> Oh, sorry, everyone. It could be 10 14 day coming up to you uh, in a short while. No live stream tonight. I'm not very well. I am better than I was like yesterday and the day before, but I'm still coughing and not feeling very well, so I won't be live uh, tonight. I hope that's all right uh, with everyone. Uh, and thanks so much for all of your lovely messages of concern, support, etc., etc., etc. I am down with below. I've been getting one thing after another this week, so I've got a couple of blood issues so uh that is the reason that i'm down um you know uh with uh with, with one thing after another a lot of you mentioned vitamin d thanks so much for all of your uh, tips on how i can get be get myself better i am actually on a course of vitamin d with being prescribed from uh the gp because that's one of the issues with uh my blood so uh i am already taking that but uh we shall get there once we get the issues resolved then um uh, then I should stop picking up one thing after another, hopefully. Been a long winter, hasn't it, this winter? Oh, well, anyway, never mind about that. Let's get on with Strat to watch. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, sorry, once more, everyone. Let's get on with strap watch. That's what you're here for. Not to hear my tales of woes. Right, so, this current situation turns with temperature at 10 HPA. We're hovering around minus 70. That is colder than where we should be at the end of January, which should be about minus 55. So, about 15 degrees colder than average at 10 HPA in the stratosphere. Going a bit lower down to 30 HPA. There, we are significantly colder than average. We're hovering around minus 80. 85 would expect to be around minus 67, something like that. So, uh, both 10 and also 30 HPA in the stratosphere over the North Pole. We are significantly colder than average. I've been through most of this winter. This average GFS midnight run uh, was forecasting things. <coughs> So, sorry again, everybody, in terms of the temperature at 10 HPA, these blue colours are the cold temperatures in the North Pole at 10 HPA at the moment. And they're maintained over the next uh, week or so, definitely. In fact, if anything, they might even get a bit colder over the uh, next week or so over the North Pole. Now, as we go into the extended range, you see quite a significant warming taking place over Siberia. And that does actually start penetrating into the North Pole itself, producing a displacement event of the stratospheric polar vortex. We find the deepest of the blue and purple colours being pushed off into Northern Europe and into uh, Russia by this significant warming of the uh, stratosphere there. <coughs> through the second week of February. That probably won't be enough to reverse solar winds. I don't think that is strong enough to be a, a, a proper SSW, but it certainly will produce a significant deceleration of the uh, polar vortex and, you know, a significant displacement event of the stratospheric polar vortex as well. This could well be a precursor to a more significant warming towards the end of February and that might be of uh, the SSW this year. The GFS 6 in there in, in its extended range is also at this well. That may be a little bit stronger with that warming over Siberia there into the second week of February. Again we see the same idea, a displacement event of the polar vortex or stratospheric polar vortex with that being pushed out into um, Northern Europe and into Russia as well by these green and yellow colours moving from Siberia into North Pole. Again, I don't think that would be quite enough to uh, produce a, uh, um, a reverse of zone wind, which is like the gold standard of saying you've had an SSW, so I don't think that's going to be a sudden stratospheric warming event, but it is a significant warming of the stratosphere. It will produce a significant deceleration, significant weakening of zone winds. <coughs> 
at 10 HPA and uh, it will probably produce quite a significant displacement uh, then as well and that could well be like the softening up precursor SS, uh, stratospheric warming event that may be a, 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 a proper SSW later on in the season. The reason I say that is uh, this, this is the six weekly forecast for um, 10 HPA temperature dominance from the ECM WS. So starting with week one which is this week because you've got cold temperatures below average at 10 HPA. As we go through to week two we find well there's that warming over on the um, so over Siberia into Canada producing that displacement event that's the 10th 17th February so the ECM is also seeing that. That kind of fizzles out into week three which is the 17th to 24th of February, but then see what happens into week four. Another significant warming uh, developing there through Canada uh, back into uh, Siberia as well, and also penetrating into a pole. And then that actually intensifies, if anything, into week five, which is preferred to the 10th of March. And I reckon that could well be <coughs> the ECM picking up the uh, picking up a, a sudden drastic threat warning event. I think the SSW uh, will happen. And I think it's going to be into the like the very end of month, probably the last week of February, and and particularly through the first week of uh, March. And this could have uh, significant implications for um, the spring, certainly the first half of the spring. Anyway, and I know that's not what a lot of you want to hear, but I think that is what we could well be uh, looking at this year. On the temperature scale, to get an SSW, you've got to go into those orange and yellow colours there, 50 to 100 degree temperature anomaly. We're not quite going that far um, on the temperature scale, but given that's five weeks away, it is a strong signal for a very significant warming, I think, there at the end of February and <coughs> into uh, March. Now, if you have a look at the zone of wind forecast for the next uh, five weeks as well, for the East MWF, again, we have very, very strong zone of winds at the moment, but it looks as though. <coughs> Sorry, sorry again, everyone. We are likely to see a deceleration, a bit of a weakening of zone wind through that second week of February. And then that carries on into uh, the remainder of February and the beginning of March. So by the start of March, uh, the... Um, the um, Ensemble meeting, so sorry, everybody, but the ensemble meeting is <laughs> still not quite with it. The ensemble meeting is close to, back close to the long term uh, average. But you notice an increasing number of ensemble pre members there that are going for reversal of zone winds through uh, the first week or so of uh, March. Got to keep an eye on those. I reckon those will increase in number over the uh, next few days and weeks. So I think it will be like very end of February, beginning of March, what we might get. Uh, we probably will get uh, a sudden stratospheric warming event. If it doesn't happen, I never mentioned it. Uh, right, that's what you're doing. <coughs> So, sorry, again, everyone, that's what you're up to date for all things stratosphere wise. Let's just do a quick historic look back at the past winter. So, today I thought we'd have a look at 85, 86, given that we are virtually uh, at the day now where the big freeze of February 1986 began, actually started at the end of January with a massive Siberian high moving into Scandinavia. And then we kept that blocking high there throughout the entirety of February 1986. What was huge around there? It was some snow on those. These <coughs> stilly winds. <coughs> Sorry, sorry, once more, everyone. There was some snow on those easterly winds for eastern areas, but it wasn't hugely snow. Month, and maybe about February 86 was just the depths and longevity of the cold. It really was a freezing cold month. I think it has a CT of about minus 1.1, something like that. Well, let's see what happened in terms of what the stratosphere was doing through that winter. So we start off with these blue and purple colours here um, on the first day of December. So, of course, that is the stratospheric polar vortex. Let's go through to uh, the 10th of December, 1985. And very cold temperatures at 10 feet way below average, actually, down to minus 80 to minus 84. So December 1985, which was quite a mild month until the end of it, uh, had a very cold uh, temperature at 10 feet. Okay. And would have been a really strong stratospheric polar vortex. Well, that's the 15th of February up to Christmas Day of 1985. Not much to change. There's a bit of a warming happening over the Atlantic into Western Europe and over. <coughs> 
towards the uh, Siberian side or the Pacific side of uh, the Arctic, causing the uh, strategic polar, polar vortex to become a bit stretched there, but still well and truly in business. And we get to New Year's Eve of 1985. And again, that's how we're looking. So by this point, we've probably seen a bit of a weakening of the uh, polar vortex, which is a bit of a stretching and displacement event going on. But overall, still well and truly in the business. Now, let's see if we get an SSW in January 1986, preceding that freezing cold February. So we've got to go there and there. Uh, right, OK, so that's how we look on New Year's Day of 1986. Again, the PB has been stretched quite a lot, but I think, or well, Saturday Polar Water has been stretched quite a lot, but it's still um, in business there. That's the 5th of February. Uh, again, cold temperature maintained. Maybe... <coughs> Maybe a little bit of a displacement of the stratospheric polar vortex in towards uh, northern Europe there. This is the 10th of January. Um, well, now we really are stretching out the uh, stratospheric polar vortex, aren't we? Despite the fact that there's not really much of a significant warming going on, but it does look very uh, stretched and elongated there. Uh, right, let's go through to about the 13th of January. 1986 and we look like that so stretching weakening and displacement of the stratospheric polar vortex but no uh no ssw no reversal of the zone of winds i wouldn't have thought despite that um uh, 17th of january so now we start to see a bit of a warming happening over siberia is about the one but it gets the job done. Uh, let's have a look. So we go through to the 20th of January and check that out. Now we have got a very... <coughs> <coughs> okay, sorry, what's more? We now have got a very significant uh, a stratospheric, sudden stratospheric warming event going on over Siberia and um, northern parts of Russia. This is about a week before the big freeze kicks off. That is being... Uh, 21st. So now I feel probably a reverse zone of wind. The core of the warmth has pushed into the top of the pole. The pole vortex is still well and truly in business, but it's displaced out into uh, North Atlantic and Northern Europe and over pole itself. I reckon that would be reversing uh, zone of winds there. So, yes, indeed, there was a major SSW displacement type of them uh, preceding the big freeze of January of uh, February 1986 that's the 22nd of January I'm pretty sure the zone of wind <coughs> would have reversed at this point 23rd of January 1986 well warm is beginning to uh, ease off but I would have thought now the damage has been done and I go through to the 26th of January um, now, you see the polar vortex, stratospheric polar vortex is still there. It's not being split. This is a split type uh, event. It was a displacement event. So, the stratospheric polar vortex is still in business, but uh, the warming was enough to uh, trigger the tropospheric response, despite in the strategy of the polar vortex still being alive and, you know, damaged and, and, uh, and uh, very much weaker, but it's still there in the stratosphere. But despite that, uh, that warming was enough to, at least in part anyway, trigger the tropospheric response, which by this point, this is the last day of January 1986, is, uh, is developing nicely. <coughs> Let's have a look at the actual weather chart for that day. And there you see it, there's the um, Siberian high there into Russia. Notice the extension from that into uh, Scandinavia and back to the Azores high as well and uh, low pressure sinking down into uh, the Mediterranean. So a very block set, and let's say that was maintained throughout the freezing cold sub-zero CT February of uh, 1986. Just quickly go through, uh, that's the chart for first of February 1986 again. Notice how the Azores and the Siberian high are linking together through Scandinavia with a bitterly cold easterly wind uh, underneath. Right, let's go back to the stratospheric uh, charts. <coughs> and uh, in the stratospheric level, the polar vortex is still there, uh, but a decoupling has taken place. Because you can't say whether the decoupling between the stratosphere and the stratosphere would have happened without the SSW and the zone of wind reversal through uh, the third week of January 1986. But I would have thought at least it would have helped, at least in part. That's the 5th of February. 
I'll go through the Valentine's Day, 1986, Love of Warming is uh, gathering pace there over Russia and Siberia. What happens with that one? Go through to the 20th, let's go through to the 17th, 16th, through the 16th of uh, February. So, yeah, we're seeing Love of Warming there, a uh, penetration from Russia into Siberia. Not as strong or as intense as that first warming that we had back in January. But repeated warmings um, taking place through uh, this winter, just probably helping to maintain uh, the blocking within the tropospheric level. As I said, the freeze carried on throughout the entirety of February uh, 1986. It was a bitter, bitter cold month, even, even if it wasn't all that much snow. This is the last day of uh, February 1986. So the polar vortex, it's been through the ringer, polar vortex, been through the ringer, it's had repeated warmings, been attacked repeatedly, has also been a, a German SSW, even if it didn't cause a split, did cause a major displacement and reversal of uh, zonal winds, I would have thought. And um, But it's still there to some degree uh, by the uh, last day of February and the last day of the winter, 1986. So uh, there we go, displacement type SSW of them proceeding the freezing cold February of 1986. Right, we'll end it there. Hope you enjoyed the episode like the strap watch. Please like, share and subscribe if you have. And we shall do it all over again for episode 10 next Wednesday. We're going to be back shortly with your centre ball team there. Come back for that in a bit. I'll say no live stream uh, tonight. I'm <laughs> still coughing too much at that. Um, but uh, you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Don't shine anyway after noon evening whenever you're watching the video and we'll see you more with the 10 to 14 days shortly for this one that's all for now and thanks for watching